Bring me everyone. What do you mean everyone? Everyone! Everyone! Welcome to Everyone Racers. A show designed for the world of low-dollar racing and oddball car culture. It doesn't matter what kind of lemon champ or lucky track dog league you run. SECA or NASA, we don't discriminate. As long as you drive it hard and built it yourself. Join us each week for tech discussion. Tips, tricks. As well as news and notes from the world of amateur endurance racing. Whether it's on the spot. Hello, sweet. Or we're lucky enough and Chrissy. 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 I give you just the tip. We're sure you'll giggle a little and learn even less. Everyone report to the paddock. This is Chris. This is Chrissy. I'm Tim. And I'm Mental. And we are right. Everyone Racers. We've got the Lemons Rally Master, Jeff Stobbs. We're going to talk Lemons Rallies today. Woo! And it- there he is. Welcome, Jeff. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah. And Jeff, we are at episode 365, and we were Good going God. to talk about the different models of the Ferrari 365 GT and the 2 Plus 2 or even the GTB, but the guy who normally does the notes lives in Las Vegas. So instead, mm-hmm. we're going to talk about the 365 cubic inch V8 that came in all Cadillac models from 1956 to 1958. No, seriously, all of the models. The Series 60S, 62, the 75 Fisher Fleetwood, the El Dorado, as well as the very first year that Cadillac offered the Seville in both the convertible and the hardtop. But wait, that's not all. The 365 engine also came in the four-door sedan Seville option, the Series 70 El Dorado Broham, and even the Special Coupe, which was only available by special order. All of these wonderful machines came with the 365 cubic inch V8. America. <laughs> wow. I don't know. I I had a car with a 370. It wasn't that great. <laughs> In 1958, or, though, come on. Uh, a 470. <laughs> well, well, we won't talk about that in five episodes then, Jeff. That's good. Yeah, if you could, that'd be great. <laughs> Cross that off the list, guys. Yeah, we'll find something else. Right, writing it down. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, so, well, if you're not working on your 50s Cadillac. What are you working on, Mental? Well, I was doing yard work. I had to uh, t- prune back all my trees, so I've got like two trash cans full of stuff to go to the thing tomorrow. Finally, was here in Las Vegas the last Sunday of every month where we do Cars und Cafe. I took Vicky's new SL down there, parked it amongst all the other Porsches, but uh, had a good time with that one. I am packing for MSR Houston. More on that in just a few minutes. And fall is here, which means right now, as my wife is vacuuming the leaves out of the pool, uh, but also we took the hard top off the Mercedes. So we've been rocking this. It's finally cooled off enough to where you can drop the top around here. We wait for winter in Las Vegas so you can, you know, drive with the the top down. I I drove to work for top down uh, most days last week, but this morning it was actually too cold. So I did. (laughs) I mean, what's too cold 80 here i'm just so i'm that's... just curious what's too cold uh Seven. see i want to say yeah no it was uh i want to say 50 58 when i got in the car yeah. this morning okay interesting <laughs> well it was uh th- it was 32 oh, no, no. here and i wore flip-flops I'm, to work so i'm not that. complaining i'm bragging let's just get that <laughs> right out of the fair way enough. fair enough fair yeah. enough it's almost beanie weather yeah, you, for mental pretty much yeah you have to talk about the foot Foot full foot of sunshine you woke up to, but we don't talk about the, the foot of 120 in the summertime. Yeah, <laughs> that's when you put the hard top on the convertible because the AC wow. works better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so um, well, it's uh, as we talk about the changing weather, Chris. What what are you working on there? Got the Mazda post race inspection after New Hampshire. Total butcher bill is it, uh, it well, it needed a wheel bearing while we were at New Hampshire. The only thing it really needed as a repair this time was a, a hole in the exhaust where the, where the hanger that exhaust off just, yeah, it was a little tiny <laughs> hole, like smaller than a quarter. 
pointing straight down at the bottom of the car. So none of that exhaust got anywhere near any people. That's why no one had any, you know, <laughs> not trying to kill anyone. So, but apparently over time, I didn't it die. The spot. But did you die? No. no. <laughs> it's great. I listened well, to that the episode. Place it could be. I listened to that episode and said, damn it, he tried to kill her again. <laughs> oh, this is the best place it could be. So I welded on a piece of like real thick, like not quite eighth inch, but real thick steel over that spot on the on the exhaust and reinforced it. And that then made a much nicer hanger for that spot that holds it. So it should be should be improved for the future. Um, there was that and like clean it and stuff oh, and bang out the dents in that door from that idiot in the mark 2 gti who decided to go four wide into turn three but got those fairly well banged out that's horrible. good yep put coolant in it put the crappy tires on it chrissy drove it over to storage garage where we stuffed the storage garage full we did yes yeah. so uh this weekend i was a little sick to start out uh then we did a garage shuffle so we put um, we shuffled, put some cars in, took some cars out, had to back up. Actually, Chris did a great job of getting uh, parallel parking into a tiny spot to make sure that we could fit the Civic, the, the Mazda, the boat, and Scooty and the Lotus all fit in our little four car crash. So, uh, yeah, so we figured that out. And, you can't, and really, home you can't really walk around them, but they're there. So that's just <laughs> the Lotus, you could almost step over, though. I'm just saying, why yeah. like build a bridge system, like a four-cornered bridge system? <laughs> it, you, you almost could. It doesn't have that much height, though. To get it, the boat is about as tall as it gets. Uh... I did think about if it didn't fit, I was going to jack up the tongue of the trailer on the boat and park the Lotus under that because the Lotus mm. is tiny. We didn't need to because it was small enough. But to get out, we did have to go one person, open the door, get out, walk out the door, close the door, and then the next person had to go. So <laughs> it's, it's, a little, it's a little tight. Uh, but hey, it's cheap and in a safe place in a really uh, nice location. So uh, so we'll take it. Uh, Tim, what are you up to? Uh, I am completing the... Uh renovation of my front lawn after it completely got burnt to death this summer so that's uh, that's good we're on i think the second or third hundred dollar bag of grass seed and dirt <laughs> and all the things so it looks it looks why pretty good make it rocks like why didn't you just go full out like something other than grass I like. I just like the way the grass looks i mean so. i know well, but like it's already a, dead it's a it's a green place yeah it's a yeah. Okay. It's yeah. it's very it looks very good right now, but it it was sure just it does. I mean death when <laughs> I got back from Maine so bad, uh, and then uh, and then I spent a little bit of time um, working on my Corvette. So for those of you that um, aren't familiar with the backstory, I have a 2008 Corvette with a uh, a fun supercharger on it that made super fun noises until. <laughs> The uh, piston cracked and a chunk of it shot out of the exhaust. And, and by, uh, by super fun noises, my favorite quote of that is from Pantless Matt, who said, and I believe the term is, you're getting, you're getting sexed by a rhinoceros. <laughs> As the supercharger kicks in. It's, just, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's really ridiculous, this car. So, um, and so I had to put, uh, while, while I took it apart, put all new bearings in it, put in new connecting rods for all forged internals, um, put a new cam in it because why not while you're in there? So, you know, while it was, you know, making 600 before, uh, it's probably going to make somewhere north of that now that it's done. Um, and that's important, you know, because yeah. it broke. So you obviously needs yeah. more. Yeah. More yeah, that's uh... <laughs> yep, I, I... Oops, Come on, baby. Is that supposed to be doing that? But yeah, I'm sorry, I yeah. keep cutting you out, Tim. That's all right. Yeah, so <laughs> so this was the this is the video of the, the first attempt at the fire. Um and it cranked a little bit, but the battery's tired and uh, and it wouldn't fire up. We we did make sure we, we do have spark, uh we do have uh fuel. You so... may ask. Yeah, there's the cracked piston right there. Really good stuff. So I'm happy it didn't scorch the head at all, and it just bounced around a little bit. Um, 
and and exit it out. So there's a it's been a two year process while we've been getting it together, and I finally have gotten around to to start to get it all the things back on it and, uh, and fired up. So yes, who's, Chrissy, who's go ahead. We? Who's we? Uh, it's the the collective we. So it, um, <laughs> Matt, Pantless Matt, and I. Um, we pulled it out and we put it together in back in his garage in LA. So it went back to LA with him. Uh, we rebuilt it down there, used a machine shop, um, that he has down there, um, for some of the, the balancing and things of, of the bits and pieces. Uh, and then I brought it back up North and put it back in. And then Jimmy Varellis from, uh, table for one racing. He came over yesterday to uh, laugh and point at me when it wouldn't start, but to also make sure like fuel wasn't shooting everywhere while I was sitting in the car. So a good, a good second That's set good. of eyes is always a good thing. Um, so he was over for about an hour. Yeah. So, but it was good. It, uh, it, it made noises. It didn't make any clunking noises. So I don't think we have any interference. So the next step is to put a fresh battery in it. Um, I'm going to pull the spark plugs, see if there's any oil on any of the plugs, um, check compression on all eight cylinders, and then fire it up again. I think it's just we were – apply liberally was the uh, the theme when we were putting the assembly lube on everything. So I think it's just got a bunch of goop in it that we need to burn off. So I only cranked it over four times. So fingers crossed on that. More in a future episode, hopefully smiles and not uh, – not engine hoists um, and sad. snarling American V8s. Yeah. Mm. And then uh, tomorrow morning I head to Maine going to meet with my contractor. We are finally getting um, my garage started. So super excited about real that. this time. Oh, yeah. For, for real, real, for real. Time. Yeah. Are like you like sure? they're delivering lumber tomorrow, supposedly. So, okay. You probably for, should get pictures of the actual, like them, like a selfie outside the house. Be like, Hey, I'm standing here waiting for you. And then get on the plane to make sure that they actually show up this time. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. <laughs> but once you get lumber, we all know we've seen in action. There's not much wood can't do so. Tim, Tim what can they do? <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of it for me. But uh, then, of course, our guest, the statuesque silhouette and smiling <laughs> face of Rally Master Jeff Stobbs. Jeff, what you working on? Uh, well, Eric wants me to plan all the rallies this year before December. Uh, so I've been working on that. Uh, currently, I'm harassing the staff of the city of Scranton to get some stuff done in Pennsylvania so we can have a good time there. And then I've been working on the Vegas rally, and it seems like a lot of people are actually very excited about it, especially mental. Mental, this is all, that, the Vegas rally is actually mental suggestion from like three years ago. Uh, and uh, we're like, no, we'll just give California one more chance. And then 19 people showed up versus like the 40 that we usually have. And we're like, ah, California's on timeout again. So, uh, and then I just finished winterizing my MGB, uh, you know, so that in Wisconsin, you actually have to take it seriously, get stored outside. So I drained the fluids and ratchet strapped the car cover on top of it. So it won't, it won't move until May. Uh, but uh, that's about it. Um, I did go see uh, someone who participates in Rally, uh, Jen, with Queen Bee Cafe. She just opened a store called the Queen Bee Cafe in Cottonwood, Arizona. And so I went for, like, the grand opening of that, and that was a lot of fun. Oh, we're gonna... She got a tattoo on the roof of her mouth for a rally once. That's fantastic. We're gonna, I'm going <laughs> to send us, the, send us the, the links to that social. We'll put all that in there because, you know, we've got, we've got people in Arizona. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Good time. Some Support of her staff got lemons tattoos without me asking. It was great. Wow. <laughs> I remember that those I'm pictures. Up 16, I'm up to 16 tattoos for 2024, so I think I'm officially a cult leader. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. The tattoo yeah, on like, the roof of your mouth. That's like one that's... hot slice of pizza away from not that having was her third. That was her third one, mouth. so... Uh, Jen's pretty core. Be like wow. Jen. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely, okay. yes. 
Sorry. Well, I'm, I'm scrolling through to see if I can find that picture said, from the last round. You know, it's a great idea for today. The tattoo on the roof of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, she doesn't want to get any like job. neck or face tattoos or anything. She's like, I'm gonna. I mean, that's a great like, choice. You will def. I was like, you will definitely win an award for getting a tattoo. But then, like, um, uh, I don't know who he races with. I think he races with Tom Wed. But Mike, uh, he got three tattoos uh, in one rally. So yeah, I'm a I'm a cult leader. That's <laughs> okay. That's fair enough. Get on my team, Chrissy. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that will be my first one at all, ever. Yeah. So you'd be yeah. quite the convert if, if uh, you I have two. Happen. I got my 20-sided dice with lemons behind it, and I'm rolling ones. And then I got a big one on my calf. I was the first person to get a lemons rally tattoo way back in 2017 when Roadkill was doing the rally. And I was like, no matter what we do, we beat Roadkill. So uh, we did. They didn't really participate, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so every, everybody kind of, beat them. Shoot. Yeah, yeah. Like you got a tattoo out yeah, of it, which is way just, better. And you yeah, started yeah, a tradition. I mean, uh, yeah. And a story. And, and, and uh, story, yeah. Tim, there are lots of tattoo parlors here in Las Vegas. Well, I'm in, but I'm not getting it on the roof of my mouth. Damn it! No, no. She says it doesn't no. hurt that much. She has one on her fingertip. That one she said hurt a lot. Hmm. Okay, that's funny. All right, all right, everyone tattooers. <laughs> this is good consumer everyone advice. Gets, yeah, everyone <laughs> ink gets tattoos. <laughs> everyone ink. I like that covered. one better. Okay, it's news yeah, against time. Let's move on here. <laughs> okay, what what's your last set? You can you have the last set. Go ahead. Oh, I'm co I'm covered in tattoos, so I can tell you all the places it hurts. Yeah, oh, Donnie. Don, Donnie says I look like a gang member. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, muscled up Jim okay. Gaffigan is a gang dealer. <laughs> All right, yeah. let's move on. Okay, okay, okay. Settle down, kids. Okay, following Hurricane Helene, the South is going to take a while to get put back together. So some locals took it upon themselves to figure out what uh, figure out their new normal. Caleb Jacobs at The Drive tells us a great story about some locals getting ingenious to solve their travel problems. Locals and volunteers in northeastern Tennessee have come up with a genius fix for one of, the many, one of their many down bridges. Build a new one out of semi-trailers. Three flat flatbed trailers placed parallel to the stream what looks like a two wide row of trailer decks mounted to the top connecting two stretches of gravel the location that they built is, appears to be super rural so obviously a bridge like this could be crucial to getting anywhere in deep in the mountains Mental this is actually pictures a there. great layout too they some people put some thought into this the rocks there to hold the trailers in place this is fantastic Probably shouldn't take big trucks over it, but if you if you can't literally get any food because you can't get across this river, it seems like a good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, I've got a, I've got a story up uh, Jeff Wakeman's alley. Maybe <laughs> I don't know if he'd I don't know if he'd be pro or con of this, but through a very weird set of corporate acquisitions and mergers, Volks. Wagon of all people owns the intellectual property of the International Harvester Scout. So, to cash in on the popularity of midsize off riders and EVs, they are bringing back Scout. Not the Scout, but Scout. For 2027, you can get your choice of the four door SUV Scout Traveler or four door pickup Scout Terra. Both are on a ladder frame, solid rear axle, all electric, with an optional gas range extender. Towing capacity is said to be 7,000 pounds for the Traveler and 11,000 pounds for the Terra. It'll utilize an 800-volt electrical architecture with bi-directional charging via uh, the North American Charging Standard Plug with a supposed 350-mile range in electric, more with that range extender. It's built to fit 35-inch tires, has a bunch of electrical outlets of all sizes and kinds, can afford up to three feet of water, and has locking differentials. Uh, all this can be yours for a projected base price of 60000 I had an article, yours was better, but also that is going to be sold direct to consumers, no dealers. They're going to have studios, yeah. but you can't just go, you you don't have to get the car from a dealer, which I hmm. anything that cuts out the dealer model, I am here for. Love it. Love it. Yep. Well, over at Haggerty, That's Stephen weird Cole that they got Smith. The, oh, sorry. Yeah. No, no, keep talking. It's good. No, go ahead. Yeah. 
No, it's just weird. Case IH still exists, but they sold the intellectual property for the scout. That's so weird. Yeah. It's, it's, it's it was this weird like <laughs> long chain of mergers and acquisitions that ended up somehow with Volkswagen. It's, yeah. You, you yeah, know, it was yeah, some yeah. intern who went, wait a minute, what? We own what? Yeah. yeah. Just, Interesting. Musical dealers. That's what that was. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Stephen Cole Smith relives some dark times. You might have forgotten about the car allowance rebate system or cars more commonly known as cars for clunkers and the retirement of 677,000 vehicles in the summer of 2009. It was a grim period with Chrysler <laughs> and GM both filing for bankruptcy and being buoyed by an $80 billion federal bailout. The federal government funded the trading as gas guzzling cars with a $3,500 credit towards a new car with an EPA fuel rating efficiency of at least 22 MPG. If you purchased one with 28 MPG, you got $4,500. The dealers, however, were required to destroy the engines with a 40% sodium silicate and 40% water solution and run until the engine became one solid block of steel. Failure to destroy these engines could result in a $15,000 fine. Federal lawmakers were forced to add additional $2 billion to the program going after the initial $1 billion and funding ran out after one week. So pour out some 40 weight for your Andy's five liter Explorer. And I'm sure that Versa was just as nice. So why is this sad? Because my family got two cars out of this. Year. <laughs> so, and uh, one they, of them did, they did not in? need, one of them did not need the, what am I going to put in it? 60% water solution. It didn't need it. Nope. We drove it oh, in. We uh, that thing. We, we put some real thick oil in and nurse that over to the dealer. <laughs> and we said, I Speaking hope now. it makes it down the street without actually blowing up. And then we yeah, ran that away. A, that was an 01 Solara that your sister had. Solara. And yeah, my sister was ran. She was like, Do, out of there's, oil. A genie light, there's a genie light on. Is that a <laughs> <laughs> I ran it with the genie light on. Um, Make and a we wish. Were like, I wish it. I wish it makes it to the dealer. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you get to wish you get a new car now. So that's barely. That's so that's why I am laughing through this story about it made it so sad that I was like at legit. I think both my yeah both my my parents and my sister made out on this deal. What so did, what did your what did your parents ditch? They had a '94 Pathfinder with 240 thousand miles on it that I had yeah. I had welded a whole bunch of holes in the frame like the year previously to get it through inspection. And uh, yeah, <laughs> end up with a Mazda five, but they got 4,500 bucks because of this for the rusty million mile Pathfinder. Fair so, amount. Yeah, it Fair truly enough. sounds Fair like enough. a tragedy that that worked out so well for you. Right. Ah, exactly. not a tra I mean, your tax dollars at work, but you know. <laughs> I don't care. Take advantage. <laughs> It's almost yeah. like why we pay taxes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember so, I had just bought a van, and one of the lesser known qualifications you had to have the registration had to be a year old. I'm like, ah, crap. Yeah. So I kept the van. Yeah. Well, I just now looked into the corporate history that allows Volkswagen to own internet to own Scout. Apparently, Volkswagen bought Navistar Trucks, which is the continuation of what used to be international harvester uh, which oh. is separate from from case harvester which is separate from cub cadet as they all eventually spun out but uh that's why volkswagen owns scout huh. yeah now you know whoa, whoa, whoa. that's weird dude, dude. hold on hold on now you know do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> Man, uh, I didn't bring any special effects at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have them for you. <laughs> this is our other favorite one. Uh, yeah, I agree. <laughs> That's fair. I kind of fitting for my predicament at this time. <laughs> uh, so, uh, speaking of Scout, you, that's right, you, dear listener, 
can get a new Scout in 2027. But if you want it to be less comfortable and spend lots of money on fuel, you can. And who's going to have that for you? Who else? <coughs> Racing Junk. They got you covered. Here is a 1972 International Scout 2 in the middle of BFE, or as I know it, Elko, Nevada, which is hours from here. I know where Elko. I've been been there. It's not good. Yeah. (laughs) You probably great great place to stop for gas. (laughs) Don't even don't even don't even do this. Keep going. (laughs) Take your Mazda five and improve gas mileage. (laughs) While it will be terribly inconvenient to get, being in the high desert, it is probably one of the few rust free scouts around and looking at the twenty two photos that this person got because they got the pro membership i am inclined to agree this thing is awesome from the ad i have an awesome 1972 international scout with the ss2 package added to it it is a very cool truck super fun to drive around with a thump in stereo subwoofer amp removable soft doors bikini top which is not shown in pictures it has a Flowmaster exhaust chrome headers a 304 engine a very rare soft door package shown here in that photo and the interior is in perfect condition the truck is in really good condition <clears throat> it is hard to find i am finally letting it go as life changes and age lol this whole truck which is I got to admit, he's right. This is a pretty cool truck. Can be yours for just $26,500. And we know that this person pays attention to details in addition to this really good looking scout because they got the pro membership. We don't know what their current deal is because uh, they've had a bit of a, a staffing change over there but they keep telling me they're going to email us and let us know what the new pro membership is supposed to look like but so if anyone knows let us know but hey it's still going to be like 20 bucks to get you a pro membership and that's how you sell stuff you know elko, elko, nevada. Nevada. even in elko nevada do you know so wakeman let me know what your address is and uh, i'll drop it off at your house just send them the, <laughs> send them a check <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. I think so this Jeff, is probably what saying. Jeff wants his to oh, look like. Yeah. Steve McDaniel lives out there. Oh, that's yes. perfect. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yes, he okay. Yeah. He has a comment hey, out there. Yeah. He has a bridge. He has a bridge a lot okay, like yeah. the one we saw in the earlier news uh, episode. <laughs> yes. I, I but he can guess. bring it up we... so that nobody comes to see him that he doesn't want. <laughs> yeah. Which is everyone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, <clears throat> That's said with love. I love Steve McDaniels. So I understand that oh, he, yeah. he didn't always rub everyone the right way, but I'm, I was always a fan. <laughs> well, I did a, a lot of rallies. I, I spent a lot of time in the passenger seat with Steve. Yes. So. Yes. Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, quick story. Oh, yeah. No, please. please. Yeah. On, yeah. The, on the yeah. second, second California rally, we get a minivan. It literally has like 100 miles on it. Like it's brand, brand new. And he's driving like Steve up the mountain. And this red light comes on and there's like a warning, like pull over now. And I'm like, what does that light mean? And he's like, I it's don't a know genie. It's a genie I'm light. Sorry. It's so, fine. So genie light? It, wasn't, it was a very angry, very bright red light. So I'm reading through the manual as he's still driving like a madman up the mountain. And I, it's like, you've somehow overheated the transmission. So we had to pull over for like 45 minutes for the transmission to resolve itself. So in a brand new car, Steve, where our brand new minivan, Steve was able to overheat the transmission in about 30 minutes of mountain driving. That's impressive. <laughs> well done. And, it was like, and then he was super mad at the car. I can't believe it. I'm like, dude, it's a minivan. What can't you believe? <laughs> That's uh, fantastic. Steve. <laughs> oh. Mm. Okay, so coming racist time. <laughs> Steve Steve is nothing if not a character. Um all right. Most get, definitely. Get them elbows out. Lemons is at Houston for the Texas tipping event. And man, they're gonna so many people are to come to the judges and say, I don't wanna complain, but <laughs> <laughs> that's how they start it. Yep. 125 cars, 16 BMWs, 20 Miatas, 11 Hondas, 6 Porsches, and mental in the skinny Coyote Ford 
freaking ranger. I'm far ranger. Man. Motherfucking son of a gun. Motherfucking far ranger. So you might be big and shit, but you ain't no fucking far fucking ranger. Far ranger. ranger. I know this truck. I ain't no stranger. I know that truck. That's a far fucking ranger. Fucking ranger. Far ranger. Damn, we're. We can keep going like this for four minutes, but I'm sure you guys have stuff to do. Oh, <laughs> Thank so you, much. Tim. That was awesome. <laughs> I love that video. <laughs> uh, uh, Metzl also said, if the good Lord is willing and the creek don't rise, he may also be driving Jeff Schrader's Porsche 944. And I'm saying, yeah, right. That's hilarious. funny. That's the funniest thing I have heard today, <laughs> Metzl. Uh, Oh, uh, you're it's, hilarious. It's running. Fuck. It's running. We, we, yes. We, it's, uh -huh. it's an In ambitious. the driveway, has it moved? There's yes. a picture of it somewhere where it looks like it's in a street. Yes. She probably Not drove it to get moving. coffee. She probably drove it to get coffee. I did, we're, I'm on the email. She says it's ready to go. Well, her uh -huh. Mitsubishi blew up. So <laughs> she might be driving it. She to might. Yours. That might be her transportation right now. <laughs> oh boy! Or the um, yes, the, four, the 411. Too. She still loves the 411 too. Really good choices oh, yeah. all around there. That's wonderful. Oh, yeah, um, so really. <laughs> lemons. People who participate in lemons make really good life choices. It's obvious. Uh, I'm an optimist. It's not just. It's not just lemons. Anyway, um, <laughs> Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Eric said, for this race, we've got a Repu versus Ranger versus Xterra showdown. Maybe two Pontiac G6. Maybe one of them is actually something else. Maybe the Subaru-powered Corvair finally runs a full day. Maybe the dick dips, dipsticks will dominate now they have a 2JZ. <laughs> no shit. Did you guys Fro not see the Facebook Freudian slip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ranger Road has given away their Xterra. Yes. Um, oh, well. Yeah. I don't know why I was tagged in it, but suddenly I got tagged in that post like twice. <laughs> so if you've got st car storage in Houston, let me know. I'm just asking for yeah. a friend. The, the unrelated to uh, anything. Is um, the, the G6 uh, does have a new race? transmission. What's up, Tim? Is is 125 cars a, a all-time high for this race? If it's uh, not, it's darn close. I mean, I could text Eric really quick, but <laughs> yeah, we'll find out. It's sure. a lot. Yeah. We'll just say it's that. A lot. It's, a lot. Yeah. it's a lot. It feels like yeah. a lot for that track. We, mm -hmm. I did talk to Eric today just about races and stuff and rallies in general. And we're operating like just like series wide. We're operating about 90 percent capacity. So we're, we're filling up pretty quick. Uh, so which is good news for everyone that participates, because that means we get to continue doing the things that we do. So, and also uh, good news for the law firm of Three Pedal and Mafia in our class action lawsuit against yeah, Lions I, I, for I, 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 Gate. Yeah, you guys did a great job. I saw those photos and I laughed and laughed and laughed. So, <laughs> very well done. Very well done. Good. I'm glad we're going to have more clients coming our way. Well, finishing up for, for uh, MSR, uh, we've got four judges this weekend. You've got Judge Shajiv, you've got Judge Bob Griffin, you've got Judge Brian Trainer, and Judge Tom Webb. So, got a good crew there so have some fun absolutely i don't want to complain but uh. yeah. <laughs> i don't want to complain but then the guy you want to talk to is the tall one wearing the cowboy hat because it's going to be funny for the rest of us yeah bob doesn't really take a lot of shit <laughs> <laughs> also uh big fan of the show and we've mentioned it before but the wrecking yard the guy that does truck astrology Jerry Wayne Longmire, he lives in Houston, so he's coming out. He's going to be on the guest list with Skinny Coyote, and hopefully, so you can follow his social media if you're not going to be there for the race and see some funny stuff, because he's been talking about it on his show. He's really looking forward to it. He's like, anybody that's going to race those kinds of trucks or cars, I am here for it. Awesome. Well, it's party, pal. <laughs> Welcome to the party. Lucky Dog <laughs> was at Pit Race by Every account, not most accounts, every account I am seeing from all of our friends who did their first Lucky Dog race, it was a great success. Or in the case of Garage Heroes in training, at least they had a great weekend because it was not a success for them. Their car blew up on test day, but I think they, they did. They had like a nice a, rental. They did. They Yeah, they, they yeah, drove the pace van, probably <laughs> overheated the transmission. Um, 
So it sounds like uh, if if Kathy or Kathy, if either one of you guys are listening to this, you guys got to come back because everybody had a great time. Saturday, your Class A winners, Velocity Motorsport. Class B was Lay and Pipe. That's their team name, not an activity. Or well, it's both. I don't know. Uh, and C, yeah, baby, Cheese Bowl Enterprises. Rock on. Sunday was. Team Celine for Class A. Class B was Gent Racing, and C was Chump Monkey. Now, as mentioned, there was lots of carnage. The Garage Heroes blew up on a Friday. A lot of folks had car trouble, but they all had a great time. Uh, the uh, V8 BMW finally finished the, uh, the the Super Cheaty BMW. They finally finished the race, so had a great time with Lucky Dog. Now you see what the hype's about. All right, and we love... We love lemons. We know that. But that's a, if you get a chance to run a Lucky Dog race, you're going to have a good time. Yep. Let's do feedback time. No, I think. Uh, oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was quiet. So I we were moving on. <laughs> that two-second delay. You give her an opening, man. She's in. Catches everyone by surprise. Shots <laughs> fired. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ah, sorry. <laughs> Uh, well, going back to our New Hampshire virtual track walk on Facebook, Kevin Beckwith said the in-person track watch track walk was awesome. Thanks. Sorry, my uh, I'm smoking some pork for pulled pork right now on my alarm. Right yeah. Is that is that what anyway. you and Chrissy call it? Yeah, <laughs> mm, it's delicious. <laughs> so Kevin said the in-person track walk was awesome. Thanks, and added that Chrissy was right. Nick is the non Kevin. So sorry guys, I am terrible with names, Nate. <laughs> yeah. Nate. <laughs> All right, That's from our funny. Insta post regarding the lawyers from Weightless Gate or Scratch uh, hashtag Weightless Gate. The Scrappy R Fuji said a law firm that misspells the, the lawsuit seems legit. <laughs> and I heard Eric talking about that one, and I'm like, oh man, this is going to be even funnier when I put that in the listener feedback. Alan Kate said, quote, we'll miss being there this weekend, which they already missed being there this weekend. And Jeremy Hall added, I should have called. Yes, you should have. Let that be a lesson to you in 2025. You just heard it from the mouth of Jeff, Jeff himself, 90%. So if you've got a race you want to go to, get in there. Otherwise, Team Richie Rich, they're always going to be there. Hack Factory Racing said, quote, the guy speed walking down pit lane in the suit during the track walk makes so much more sense now. Well done. <laughs> Uncle Dave asked, were there papers served? Yes. And Eric At the Rude. end of the judges meeting. <laughs> <laughs> did, Rude, did Rude get some? He should have. Oh, yeah. He, he was yeah, standing on a pickup the truck during the judges meeting. And as soon as he said any questions, I walk up and said, Eric Rude. He looks at me and gives me a weird, <laughs> you know, typical Eric look. And I said, you've been served. He just, he just shakes his head and hands it to Janice and moves along. Yeah. Who is well, a they do have, <laughs> You have legal representation with Janice. So that's benefit exactly. Benefits for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, and Eric Root said, this should get decided in the only logical place for such things. Aww. Judge Judy's courthouse. Should have mm. done that. Mm. that would have Who been a good would add-on. Judge Judy like more? Eric Root? <laughs> Or DJ914. Because once she decides who she likes, the case is decided. You know, they're both charming. They're both cute. Darn. That would be a great episode. Eric has a really impressive beard. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) DJ914 plays instruments. Oh, that's fair. (laughs) Well, Eric plays guitar, though. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That could be the name of their new cover band, Weightless Gate. yeah, I might spend too much time with Eric. Wait, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, on YouTube, one more. James M said, tech tip. Bruce was able to remove the bearing outer race. This is in the hubs, the aluminum hubs of their RX-7 by laying a weld bead on them. The heat enabled the outer race to be pulled out of the hub. He had a whole bunch of these hubs sitting around. He's like, I don't, can't get the races out. You know? And so we, typical Bruce. And then eventually he just, yeah, I'll just weld something on it. The heat <laughs> difference was enough that it came out. And okay. Anybody but Bruce, you'd say that's ridiculous. But Bruce does these things and it just works. This is what you know, we all, that we, we fell in love with Bruce when he welded brake pads onto his clutch to finish a race. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. It worked. Who knew? Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah. Who, you know who usually doesn't <laughs> weld inappropriately? <laughs> <laughs> you know who always pays her race fees on time? Ooh. Oh, there you go. It doesn't get on weight old skate, so that's good. You know Stays who could cookies. settle the weightless gate lawsuit with a plate of cookies and just telling everyone to get along? Correct. <laughs> All the above. All the above. True. All the above. Hi, Chrissy. Hello. Hello, Hello Chrissy. Okay, it's my time to <laughs> oh, it's my turn. Oh, if you've not met this guy, you've done yourself a disservice. On occasion, you could spot, spot Jeff Stobbs at a Lemons race, but more, he's usually at a Lemons rally. Yep. If you love the wacky Lemons culture, creativity, questionable decisions, but do not love the idea of strapping into a race car with 108 other lunatics, have we got a deal for you. <laughs> or... Even if you do love the idea of strapping into a race car with 108 other lunatics, you still need to do a Lemons Rally. Tonight, our guest is Rally Master Jeff Stobbs, and we're going to talk about this great time and where you can make a well-informed bad decision in 2025. <laughs> now, I think my favorite difference between a Lemons Race and Rally, having done both, is that uh, at a lemons race, you've got all the stuff with you there and all your friends there. And it's wonderful. When lemons rally, when you break down, you get to do it in the middle of nowhere. And you, you get to do it. Usually you know, in the dark. Right. Mm -hmm. You, you get can to make all clutch, the mistakes you want. No one will judge. Yeah. Clutch slave cylinders in auto zone parking lots. You get to do all like all those mm -hmm. kind of fun things, driving through traffic with no clutches. But you know, again, exciting adventures that where you don't have all these things. And Accessory belts on Cadillac Cimarron's and frozen rain in Texas Hill Country. Yeah, you I know, mean, like leaving did without have the advantage a, of having. Oops. <laughs> Just keep talking, yeah, Jeff. Good. It's totally fine. Oh, it's good. Uh, Chris, Chris, Chris had the advantage of having Dave watch him work on the car while he ate potato chips. So, yep, <laughs> never yep. alone. <laughs> Dave always relishes the, the ability to have his reliable tow to sit there while watching friends work on their other cars. Yeah, yeah. So. But the other yeah, side of that nice. is that he didn't know how to post to Instagram. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. so I would just get like a text message from his wife. Like, here we are. I'm like, okay, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> good Bob enough. and saves him a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, Jeff, aside from my little pitch there, for, for those who I'm sure are now rushing to their computers to sign up, tell us a little more about Lemons Rally for those who are not familiar. I'm going to go check on my meat. Yeah, we'll enjoy your pork. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you go there. Hopefully the temperature's not too high. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, we've actually been working on marketing exercises to really how to define uh, the Lemons Rally. Currently, it's just kind of road trips for hoopties. Uh, the more painful you make the event for yourself, the more chances you have of winning. Uh, so in the beginning, points are generally based on how bad your car is. If it's British, Italian, what year it's from, uh, does it have like, you know, uh, an abandoned make, uh, stuff like that. So that's that's the, the basic how you get into the Lemons Rally. We also have a rental car class. I feel that the rental car class has a better award than the normal classes. It has a really good uh, book by uh, Rich. I always say his name wrong. Duisberg. He was actually at uh, NHMS with you guys. Uh, he was driving in the Rover that used to be owned by an F1 driver. They had the theme that they were on strike. Oh, yeah. oh they were yeah. the best. Monkey, monkey, monkey. I, I, I. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what yeah, that means, yeah. but that's what they said yeah, all yeah. weekend. <laughs> they were yeah, great. So the, book's called, yeah, the book's called Nothing Handles Quite Like a Rental Car. He's rent, wrote a lot of, I've read all of his books. He's a great author. So even if you don't win the rental car class, uh, I recommend picking up his books. Uh, he has a more recent one. It's called The Weasel. And uh, that was, it's about an F1 driver who didn't have enough money to uh, do F1 driving and was involved in the, the great train robbery in England. Uh, and so it's uh, uh, interesting stories about really interesting people. Uh, anyway, back onto the topic. Oh, yeah, no, we're going to link both of those to the show notes, though. I'm they're, they're on Amazon, yeah. I hope. All right, awesome. Tim, does Turo count as a rental car? Oh, yeah. So, man, we had a B-body rental car, Turo, uh, in the Virginia rally. Thing was held together with duct tape. It was amazing. Yes. I didn't realize it was a Turo until, like, the, like, because I just gr judged it like a normal B-body. And they're like, you know, we rented this, right? And I was like, no, I had absolutely no idea. That's absolutely insane. So, 
Yeah, there was like signs on what you could and could not use on different parts of the car. <laughs> like, like, yeah, don't roll this window down. Don't use this handle to close the door. Stuff like that. It was it was a great oh. car. Uh, one of my favorite Turos is uh, a father and son combo. His dad lives in Maine. Uh, son lives out in the Bay Area. But uh, they rented a Fiat and spent the entire time dressed as Mario and Luigi. Uh, that's another oh, yeah. really good way to be. Yeah. That's another really good way to be successful in a rally is just to lean very, very hard into your theme. Uh, you will be forgiven for not bringing a dumb car if you lean very, very hard into the theme. Uh, I got really comfortable so in yeah. those shorts and do balances after. You <laughs> oh, man. I mean, every time I saw you, you were working on the car, but you looked great. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Greasy, right. but great. <laughs> I only usually just saw his lower half, like it because was... <laughs> he was under it. He was under the car. <laughs> yep, yep. That that dang old Corvette. Uh, but um, yeah. So and now we've kind of moved away. You know, when we first started the rally, like an eighteen-hour day just of pure driving, eighteen hours was not uncommon. And then we kind of realized that there's a lot of people. I'm into cars. You guys are into cars. People that participate in the rally are into cars. But there's some people who are not into cars. Uh, they're into the adventure of a road trip, seeing dumb things, and going to pretty places. So we've added a lot more social elements to it. Uh, you know, the, there's been a lot of route changes. Uh, again, Mental's fault. Uh, the Vegas rally, and he had suggested doing a cloverleaf. And it took about three years for Eric and I to kind of wrap our heads around it. Oh, there's Mike. Uh <laughs> He got three tattoos on that rally. <laughs> uh, anyway, so um, it took us a little while. We were like, no, it's got to be tough. And then we're like, wait, you know, tough is fun, but having fun is fun, too. Uh, so we tried out a cloverleaf last year out of Cal or this year out of California, and it went really well. So we use we tested it out there, and then we're going to put Mental's idea to full use in the, in the uh, Vegas rally. That's fantastic. Uh, we 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 have yeah. some we are we are developing plants already. There's going to be hopefully a very large sorry for party presence. Yeah, you just have to tell Jay that you didn't enter Sonoma because of work obligations. Otherwise, he's going to get mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> Which is actually true because I yeah, have to work that Friday. Mm -hmm. And so well, someone's going to have to be at the registration and I'm going to have to meet up with everybody later. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. So I'm glad that you've admitted that uh, in person on video so I can show that to Jay at a it's later a record. date. Absolutely. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the, the rally can really just be anything you want. Uh, recently, I had someone email me and they're like, I want to bring my 80 year old dad. And I'm like, you can choose your own adventure. Like if you want to go to all the checkpoints, you can go to all the checkpoints. If you want to go to one checkpoint, you can go to one checkpoint. There's every every year, especially in the long rallies, I just lose a whole team. I have no idea where they they don't post. Oh no! Like, <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> they do it intentionally. I think I think we're an alibi. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I'm pretty sure we're an alibi oh, for that's other a good things. Idea. Yeah, maybe they want to go gambling. Yeah. Or something. So if you need to use us as an alibi, I'll provide you wristbands. Uh, yeah, or or and I'm I'm going to show this picture real quick because. Uh, I came down there and at this rally, this was the, uh, it was the California rally, but you guys were down the road in Laughlin. That was uh route 66. The, yeah. And, and yeah, you actually lost Dave, Dave Mills yeah, was yeah, stuck yeah. in the desert where he was yeah. digging himself out by hand because yeah. he went someplace he shouldn't have gone in a vehicle he just bought. Cause that's what Dave does. It is a very Dave story. It alibi. Was I, I was like so stressed out. He disappeared on the freaking New England rally. He had five <laughs> cars. He brought a Jeep with the trailer. Yeah, that broke. He attached his Suburban to it. That broke. Oh, there's Jen's car. He attached yeah. his, uh, some rental car to it. That broke. So then he had abandoned the trailer. I don't know. It was insane. Fucking damn. I love that guy. Right? Like, right? He, right? he stresses me out so much. Like I'm just, and he's always in places where you can't contact, and so you're like, are you, are you just like voicemails? Like, are you dead? Like, I, what do yeah. we need to do here? And, um, and he's so, yeah, he, you because you don't want anything bad to happen to him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, you know, for content, I want bad things to happen to him, but personally, <laughs> I don't want bad things to happen to him. Uh, so yeah, we lose people all the time. It's okay. Uh, 
uh, it's choose your own adventure. Do as much or as little as you want. Uh, I'm still going to have fun. And there's still, you know, if you get a tattoo on the roof of your mouth, there's still the chance you get a trophy. And this is another thing. I, I, I'll and correct me if I'm wrong, other members of the show, but I would argue that the potential for food is much better on a rally. Now, when you race with Chris and Chrissy, you eat well. When you race with Tim, you eat well. All right. But I've seen also a lot of other teams that their idea of feeding the teammates is the infamous, you know, variety pack of chips and, yeah. you know, a, a case of water. But on the choose your, you know, on the rally, choose your own adventure. You want to sit down and have a meal at a friggin' Yelp place that is recommended by everybody. Boom. Yeah, I would say that a good plan on like a, a rally, especially out west. It's go to like the Mexican place with the 3.8 because it's going to be the best food. Uh, they're just <laughs> upset about, you know, if you read the reviews, it's like, oh, they were rude or they spoke Spanish or something terrible. Right. That, if they don't know. speak English, then it's fine. Then it's, it's better. The end, it's the end of the world. Yeah. So. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. It, the, the food's good then. That's. Tiny. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm scrolling down to see if I'm supposed to be asking a question. Uh, I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> Yeah. We'll th- yeah, yeah, we'll throw this out there. So you've alluded to this already. Um, you're talking about, you know, you've had the traditional lemons rally. We had the conversation about Steve McDaniel where it used to be drive 2000 miles, kill a moose, make a tent yeah. out of its skin. Turn left. <laughs> Turn left. Yeah. They're, the wor- so mathematically, the world Texas uh, world tour of Texas, the, which was like the last big one that he kind of planned planned uh (laughs) was um so long that if you had a car that couldn't maintain 70 you mathematically could not complete it without like staying up for 36 hours (laughs) so (laughs) it was just like dude come on yeah and so i'm I'm, look we're looking at the new schedule which of course we've got posted linked in our show notes and this is there's um there's a lot of circular routes which I think that's great. The hub and spoke, as you mentioned, and you've also got a hybrid. It's a circular hub and spoke. Like you go to one place, hub and spoke out of there, and then go back to the original place. So yeah, you guys are trying to keep it fresh. Is this based on feedback stuff you want to do, making it easier for media, all of it, none of it? Um. Well, me. so we actually have a new app called uh, Wayward. Sorry, Mm -hmm. I blanked on it for a second there. And it's like a GPS tracking app. So if you're part of our event, we provide you a link and the entry code. And you can see where everybody else is uh, during the rally. As long as you won't lose Dave anymore. Yeah. (laughs) No, I did. He didn't open the app. (laughs) (laughs) And he's a tech guy for a living. I know. He didn't open it. Like he he opened it at the start and then the whole three days didn't move. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) A lot of the changes to the rally are based on feedback and just kind of reflecting, you know, Eric and I don't really have normal jobs. Like you don't like, there's no clock to punch into. Like if we're like, Hey, we're going to go, you know, screw around for nine days. We can kind of get away with it without, you know, having to submit vacation paperwork or worry about income uh, because we just, you know, the way we get paid. And, uh, and we realize like five, six day rallies, like a normal person's going to have to take like nine days off to, if they want to come from somewhere else and then, you know, and then if it's a long route, like into in like route 66, you know, there's no other way to do route 66, but route 66, well, they started in California. They still have like a three day drive back. Uh, so we kind of reduce the number of days, uh, to just kind of appeal to more people. I think it's a lot easier to get four days off, uh, or like a three day weekend off than it is to go to your boss and be like, I need 10 days to go drive. <laughs> what do, what do you need 10 days for? It's kind of hard to explain. Uh, I might come back with a tattoo. I'm sorry. Uh, so, or three. Yeah, Don't look in my of, mouth. Yeah. Well, yeah, Mike. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we think about that, um, a lot. Uh, that, that was a big consideration. Um, you know, it's really not about like the, like the, it, there's no burden to me. Like I, I'm retired, like I have other sources of income. So like for me to like come out and hang out for five days is actually like, it's most of my social life, to be honest. My, you know, we moved from somewhere to Madison, Wisconsin and like my wife's a PhD. So she 
doing her science stuff and I'm just kind of sitting in the house. So it's it's nice for me to like have a, some social interaction, which is, I think everyone can agree that regardless of what kind of lemons it is, uh, that social interaction is very important and we all cherish it. Um, so yeah, uh, that was the big feedback. And um, and honestly, we tried the clover leaf in California, and it was just awesome to come back to the same place and not have to re unpack your stuff and get ready, and then eight hours pack all your stuff up and go to the next hotel. So uh, that's uh, also kind of the idea behind the circular is that you know we start in a place, so if you fly there and buy a car or whatever, um, you know where we start and end without having to like try to figure out. Well, this the end point is ten hours away uh, on interstate. It's like 30 hours away when we yeah. plan a route or, uh, you know, you know, completely hypothetical, say like you have a Cadillac and it doesn't make yeah. it and you can just abandon it and then still mm -hmm. meet everyone for the social events in the evenings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was another thing. We wanted to shorten our days uh, to have more social events. Uh, and during the California rally, we went go-karting and people wore their costumes and it was a super fun. Like I loved it. Uh, Jim Forbes was there with <laughs> his son amazing. and they were dressed like Mario and Luigi driving an old Fiat, not a Turo, like while we were doing it. And then they like started it like kind of bumping people like you were playing Mario Kart, <laughs> and then you know, uh, oh, no. Dr. E Dr. Evil was there, you know, and these are adults, it's not night yet, it's daylight. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Evil was there with Austin Powers, and so everyone was just screaming each other on the track. It was a lot of fun. Uh, so just more more things like that. Uh, I hope that more people, you know, it's usually about a quarter of the rally shows up to those. So I would I would like it if more people showed up. I think it would make it a lot more fun. So yeah, so, so those are really the two big things. Make it easier for people to get the time off and uh, actually let people meet each other for once. Because you have to be really weird to sign up for a lemons rally, to be honest. Yeah. I can always the tell, like, when I'm like, oh, you so got a normal easier. job and you look kind of normal, so <laughs> I'll never see you again. <laughs> so I, I would think that gateway. having having more uh, more marketing things, such as media, um, would be certainly helpful to to get people to understand that it's it's not as terrifying as it might be so you you've mentioned yeah. that the wrap-ups are are really tough to film but we all love them so are we going to see more rally wrap-ups so i write them and i submit them and then that's what happens so uh it's cool don't worry about it uh our our editor's name is john and he is just a super busy guy uh and he has a lot going on just like with kids and stuff so uh you know in the end the priority ends up being the you know the races um it, you know i know that it's 14 minutes or whatever but having filmed those in the past uh they are it's a lot of work so i i don't i don't i'm not super like offended that we don't do rally <laughs> wrap-ups i would like to do more um you know, that is another piece of feedback that I get often from people who rally and also race. They're like, where's our feed, our, our wrap up? And I'm like, well, you should just email Jay. So if you have a problem with the wrap ups, email Jay. <laughs> okay. Go, there we go. go do that one. <laughs> yeah, it'll be easy. Don't worry I, about it. He'll we should just start time. a, we should start a petition at every race from now on and just sign it and hand it over. That could be a whole theme, really. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Good. There you go. There's a More rally wrap up. Got four days. Yeah, yes. you've got four days. Yeah. There's a race rally gate. Up. Rally oh. gate. Oh, yeah, that's... <laughs> yeah. Who addressed? I think we have some Nixon. lawyers to help with that. Exactly. You just accuse the Jeep of everything. <laughs> ah. All right. What's some great uh, car examples, team examples in 2024? For what did you love? This uh, year? If you bring the Instagram back up and uh, scroll down to like uh, August or whatever, keep the scroll down a lot, and you'll find the Doom buggy, which is oh terrifying. god, the, yes, those the the they're all dressed up like moose. It was oh, moose no, thing rally. The other way. Go up the other way. That's oh no, you're going the right way. I'm a dick. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how many times I can make mental scroll. It's funny. Yeah. Actually, so I think we'll I can just, just we'll just cheat because I think it's a Mustang rally. Yeah, that's who it is. Yeah. So this is the I get this is the first time I ever gave a car a thousand points. Like I didn't even look at it. Like I stood next to it and I said a thousand points. <laughs> and I don't think I'll ever give another car a thousand points. And then in this horrible car, they went and did all but two checkpoints. It was it just it's, oh. you, you'll see in a second. Oh, are they uh, private? 
I don't know. Yeah. I, I, and you could describe it to us in the meantime yeah. while Mental tries to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Because we're friends with them. We follow it's them. We should be, yeah, on their it's it's, podcast. It's really terrible. So it's a. <laughs> Thank 19, you. Thank you. Podcast. A 1961 Corvair. Um, so their theme was like everything was like a Navy ship, like a, a like a experimental Navy ship. So some guy in the high desert in California bought this car the corvair took the drivetrain out and then made like a dune buggy out of it but to make the dune buggy work he had to flip the corvair engine backwards and then used a vanigan's axle parts i can't remember what the heck they're called to make the wheels rotate the correct way um so then the guys from mustang rally were like hey uh we want to bring there's only two seats uh so this sat like through the 70s through the 80s through the 90s until literally 2023 when they were like we, we'll buy it from you and they wanted four seats so they cut it in half uh and then welded in a bunch of uh uh you know uh angle iron and like you know they actually did good welds like they would have passed tech for sure uh you know extended the roll cage and you know did all these things to it and but they didn't extend the shift linkage uh so the purse yeah hold on <laughs> so the person that was sitting behind the driver was the person who shifted the car oh That's my god <laughs> that yeah. is amazing I, what? I have a ton of yeah 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 i have a ton of no. videos so it's, and they all have like these like horse riding yeah there's their help their goofy ass helmets uh yeah so <laughs> yeah so uh if you just want to dominate all rallies forever that's the way to do it the thing was a oh so it didn't my start. god so they, it didn't start so they get to home depot and we're like in a home depot parking lot because the hotel said they were going to reserve parking spaces for us and in rally tradition they were like who are you we fired that person like okay <laughs> so we just kind of creeped over between the starbucks and the home depot so there's like normal people doing normal Friday morning things like getting their construction trucks ready. And they're watching these, you know, three idiots work on whatever the heck that thing is. And uh, luckily for them, it wouldn't start. So they trailed it in and they were working on it all through judging and it wouldn't start. And I, when I, when I left, they're like, it won't turn over. But luckily Jim Forbes uh, rally, like the king of rallies, uh, you, know, you know, he's uh, he's amazing. He does amazing things. He helps everyone. Uh, he's like, you're missing your condenser. Uh, so somehow he jury rigged something and the car started and I was like, holy shit. Oh, oh, oh they, they're on the road. Oh God. <laughs> it's because like, I really like at the beginning, not knowing that it would be okay. I was like, I really hope they don't make it. Like, I hope that it just doesn't start. They pack up, they go home. Cause it's terrible. Look at that thing. It's terrifying. And it's not safe. <laughs> it's, it's, it's terrifying. It, it is such a, a, a just, you know, and then, yeah, there it is. That's the, they had to like buy a tarp to put over it for a roof. <laughs> yeah, I helped put it on. So yeah, so on one of the meetups, I, I, uh, go ahead. I, I am dating myself here, but when I was a kid, we had these things called erector sets and you would- <laughs> No, you're 100% no. Yeah. That, you're 100%, that looks, like, like, that an that looks like an erector set, set. Bill. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> that. Sometimes you have to adjust the car. Uh, I literally called it an erector set. I was like, and like I said, I was like, I really kind of hope it doesn't work out for them. Like, I love them. I love it when they rally. Uh, everyone thought it was a Charlie Brown theme, but really they just stole shines to make the car longer. Uh, <laughs> uh, Shit they this, found on the is... side of the road. Let's add it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like the kind like... of car any person in Africa would build of just about the random part yeah. that they like Have found. You ever seen the 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 uh the video where the aboriginal tribe finds an abandoned car in australia like in the middle of nowhere and just by using shit they find off stuff they find off the ground uh they are able to get this car running like it's literally infested with like koalas and stuff and so they get this car it's a great video if you ever can track it down uh I, I like i think i saw it during an anthropology class in like 2001 and they just get this car going and it's it really is what it looks like just like you know Good luck, everybody else. Or like, you know, some countries like aerospace programs, uh, if you've ever seen those videos. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, it was, it was terrible, but they made all but two checkpoints. Like they just kept going. 
and, uh, and through keep... like you know no small effort because i believe it kept overheating mm-hmm. and they didn't have a big enough gas tank so they had that solution and yeah every time they had to stop somebody was under the hood doing something Oh no! So what they're doing there is sorry, I pointed at my screen. That was stupid. No, keep going. Uh, it's good. <laughs> they're, they're they're greasing their axles because, like I said, it like it's like the planetary axles. I think what they're called. It's making the wheels go the right way, but you know they probably weren't designed to go that fast, so they're re-greasing everything all the time. Uh, oh, you know that tr- that trunk isn't stock. It was a really nice piece of wood, though. Uh, so uh, um, I signed their car. It's a it's a great car. Uh, Anything that's convertible, I, if you keep your top down, that's a lot of points. I'm just thinking about, I'm still going back to them shifting. You're like, that's funny for the first mm, 10 minutes. And then yeah. it's like, really? I don't want to play this game anymore. Or I want to yeah, start uh, messing with it and be like, no, why aren't we in third? Wait, we should be in, what What are you in? Yeah, no, I just, I, I, that's, I, I drove the, they called it the engineer position. <laughs> I drove the engineer position. Uh, so did Jay uh, at the award ceremony because it ended in Santa Cruz and he, he came and saw us. And uh, first and second were super hard to find, but third made it feel like you were going to like rip the lever off. So I was never able to get it to third. They were like, third. I was like, nah, I don't want to break your car. <laughs> so. It's very loud. I wasn't was thinking how difficult it was. I was just picturing it being like a normal sequential, not like sh- it would go into gear type thing. You yeah. add such complexity if it is not easy to shift in the thing. Yeah. Somebody's yelling at you saying third, third, I'm trying yeah. third. Yeah. Why aren't you in there? You're slowing <laughs> down. <laughs> what a I think right, never mind. That's second. <laughs> You're getting second. That's it. I thought they got tired of yelling, I think, at some point, because I saw them starting to do, like, hand signals. Oh, yeah. Like, That's- third. And, yeah. And you're like, oh, they must be tired of yelling after 36 hours of this. Yeah. So, yeah, that's us at the the museum in Stockton. Oh, uh, my what goodness. Uh, he hooked us up and gave us a museum tour of a very interesting museum in Stockton there. Uh, the Hagen, Mu- Hagen? Hagen Museum. Uh, so it was really cool. <clears throat> So that there's the uh, ultimate rally car, but for just like normal people, you know, uh, the bigger, the more comfy the car, uh, you know, you're not going to get as many points. Like my friend Kevin and I, uh, Mentals met Kevin. Kevin, uh, we were two luxury sized gentlemen in an MG midget. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Always if funny. Call some, if you want to call someone fat, but just call them luxury sized. Oh yeah. So yeah. yeah. So we're, we're just gone. cramped in there the whole time. We drove from Minnesota to Monterey. <laughs> This is a Steve rally. So we left from Minnesota to drive to Monterey and then the rally started and then he made us drive to Canada and back. <laughs> it was awful. It no was problem. Awful. Yeah. None. It's I, easy. I slept. I slept like right in the there. Parking lot. Like just, right a quick, there. Yeah. just a quick stop <laughs> up to Canada. It's not on interstates, right? Like all the checkpoints are on PC8, like yeah. Highway 1, which if you've ever driven it, it's not a fast road. Like it's. Nope. A lot of hairpin turns, and you're going about 20 most of the time. So, yeah, don't now, want to do that again. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, Tim and I are obviously geeked for the Le- uh, Las Vegas rally. Uh, Dean and Jackie, uh, they've got it narrowed down to like six cars. Matt's in on this. We've got it. We're making plans. But oh. what are what are you looking forward to for 2025? Not like car wise, but like the schedule. You know, because there's some new stuff on here. You're like, oh, or stuff you like to go back to areas you just love to visit uh well for the east coast rally actually in february we were planning on going to north carolina and south carolina and as your bridge photo demonstrated they don't really have the infrastructure to support us right now Uh, (laughs) so we were so we were like uh we probably shouldn't like add to their burden like it's because like it's not like i mean lemons rally people are great but their cars will require tow trucks and materials and other stuff so we ended up going to pennsylvania uh up to scranton uh you know out to erie to carlisle back to scranton uh scranton loves us we have a good relationship with the city uh they get us cool places to start and uh i actually might get like a group rate on a hotel this time so we'll see how that works out um uh, you know, uh, Vegas is new. Like I had mentioned before, it was Mental's uh, idea. Um, and again, we're just trying to attract more people on the West Coast. You know, California purports to have this huge car culture, but apparently they don't want to participate in our car culture. I think I had like 
four teams actually from California, the California rally, and everybody else was from somewhere else. We had people from Florida and Texas. Makes sense. And, Everyone yeah. says that, then they do it, and they're like, okay, this is actually a ton of fun. Yeah. Yeah, I think there might be like the I want to be cool factor going on or something like that, right? Yeah, no. If it doesn't involve Angel's Crest, I'm not going. Yeah, get uh, rid of that illusion right now. You, you, yeah, are, yeah. you're not going to be cool. I mean, everyone loves you. They talk to you all the time. Like, why are you driving that horrible piece of thing that's going to kill you? Uh, yeah. So, uh, and then you give them a bunch of stickers and life is good. Uh, I'm excited about the uh, Rust Belt Ramble in July. Uh, that one's going to be within the confines of Michigan. Uh, we think that there's a lot of cool stuff. We'll probably make it up to the UP and hang out with folks uh, and maybe stop by Dale's uh, antique store again. Uh, last time we went to his antique store, they like <laughs> they bought the place out. They like bought everything. It was great. Uh, uh, and we're, we're this is also the rally a couple of years ago that you made the news <laughs> yeah, by, yeah, by protesting yeah. in front of GM headquarters to bring back Saturn, which was brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Fox News yeah. carried that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel bad because Andy DiDiRosi kind of burned some bridges with the the media out there because he was like, "Yeah, we're gonna." Have... He didn't tell us that it was a joke. He just told them there's going to be a protest <laughs> at the GM headquarters, <laughs> so all these people show up with cameras and stuff, and like every and I don't know why, but everyone in our little well because we're not smart. Uh, everyone in our little group was like, oh, I get this joke, and everyone played along. So uh, Phyllis, uh, of the Corey and Phyllis's team, uh, they, uh, she's like interviewing, like, my first car was a Saturn. I love Saturn. Bring back Saturn. This is like, I'm really glad everyone got the assignment before we said anything. Last year, but before we had left, you know, we had a pizza party. <laughs> oh, it's still up. Excellent. Oh, yeah. This is on a site that covers the, 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 how you know the the i think somebody it's probably like yeah they don't they don't they don't talk to Andy anymore they don't they don't talk to him oh there he is there, there, there he is, he is. Uh, yeah there's me and there's there's eric yeah. <laughs> it's like a pretty well organized yeah well, like okay. protest so, here it looks like well a lot, it, it like there are a lot of people yeah, I mean, so other than California, I mean, we average 40 to 45 cars a rally. So that's, you know, 80 to 100 people easy. So I could, you know, we bring 100 people all the time, all over the. There's Phyllis! <laughs> <laughs> so she's giving, There's like, Eric on his phone behind him. <laughs> but everybody, it's not like you had dirty pieces of cardboard. That's what, you know, you every, you must have bought out the pieces of, no, uh, of uh, is... paper. So we, yeah, we prepaid Andy for a bus tour. Uh, and we're like, you know, just give us, you know, cause he runs a tour company. There's Shane uh, runs a tour company. I've watched this video a while. Sorry. He runs a tour company. He's the one that put the TR three motor inside of a Corvette, which Tim, that might be a solution to your problems. <laughs> I love that idea. I'll start looking for one. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, Anyway, uh, so Andy, like, calls Eric, like, 20 minutes before we're supposed to show up at the bus company, like, this is my idea. And we're like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> and so we did it, and it worked out really well. Uh, we've also, um, oh, who's the crappy GM president? I can't remember his name right Roger now. Roger Smith. Roger Smith. I wanted to say Bob, but I knew it wasn't Bob. Uh, so we held a memorial service for Roger Smith uh, outside of one of the GM plants. <laughs> so you know when we when we go to detroit it's a good time we have fun uh you know we go see abandoned stuff and you know make fun of car manufacturers uh so and then we're returning to the pacific northwest for the first time since i want to say 2019 we only went once uh and uh now we're going back to see if anyone wants to show up uh and, and then uh the, call. this is the hybrid one nope okay, yeah, this yeah, is, yeah 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 nice yeah yeah so and then um you know, I planned a really good rally for Pacific Northwest the first time, and staffing got kind of screwed up. So I wasn't there uh, to clap for everyone and tell them they're doing a good job and take pictures. Uh, so, you know, it just no one seems super impressed. So we're we're giving another shot to make up. 
to uh, the Pacific Northwest and apologize. I may uh, be then, giving something away. I know nothing mm-hmm. of this rally schedule, but I see Astora mm-hmm. or Astoria, Oregon, and instantly people of my age think Goonies. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. I there we go. To planning. To be to be honest, I'm still working on hotels, so <laughs> I'll figure out what I'm going to do. Uh, probably what is that? That one's in August. Eh, probably May. Okay. I'll know what's going. I'll I'll email you in May. <laughs> uh, then we got Fall Failage. That one's always super popular. We just had it, and again, that's the most recent one I lost David on. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're gonna, we started at in Plymouth this time, which there were some issues with it. Uh, just trying to get organized with the city there. So we're going to start again at the Lars Anderson Museum, uh, and uh, hopefully. Uh, we can give a presentation with the staff there and it'll be a much more interesting pre-rally thing than we usually have for New England. And then we added for the first time, we're having six rallies this year. Uh, so I'm working on my you know, frequent flyer miles to get to Germany more often. Uh, so we're going to do Texas. Uh, so that'll be uh, Austin to Laredo or maybe Corpus Christi uh, to Austin, you know, uh, I don't know if anyone's ever been to Corpus Christi before, but it can be dynamic there. So I think that I, I just wanted to do more research before I like completely decided that's where I would send the rally. Um, it's because, the tail yeah. end of hurricane season. There is zero fail in that plan. <laughs> <laughs> hey, good stories. That's all we need. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah it's, uh, I'm, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to 2025. Uh, you know, uh, I think, I've been planning them now for three years. And I think like now I'm actually like this year, I was very, very confident in everything that I did. So I feel like that I will, it'll just be more fun than it, than it has in the past. Which is saying a lot because I've never had a bad time on a lemons rally. Yeah. Well, this year we went candlestick bowling. That was amazing. (laughs) That's that's a new England thing. That's great. Okay. This sounds fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. It was a good time. I love going there. Bring the kids. There it is. That's oh, definitely. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, uh, yo, go ahead. If someone wants to do this for the first time. What are they? What's the? What's the? The top three things they should concentrate on to have a good time. Um. No, just literally having a good time. If you're like, if you're comfortable with working on cars on the side of the road, then that's part of the adventure. But if you're like, you know, someone who occasionally watches Chris Fix to get your air conditioner recharged or something like that. You know, just bring a normal car and have a good time. Uh, you know, you can make up for missing points uh, with not bringing a bad car by really leaning into your theme and acting like an idiot the whole time. Uh, you know, Phil and uh, his sister do a really good job. They, oh, you know, they yeah. bought a Honda, but they dressed up as Too Fast, Too Furious. So they were furries and just kept on yelling at everyone about family and putting spoilers on random cars. So, like, that's another, <laughs> that's another way. Yeah, that's just another way to, like, be six. If you really want to win a piece of square wood, uh, that's another way to be really successful with Lemons Rally is just, you know, it's it really is just choose your – I want. I just want you to have an adventure. That's what's the most important part to me. I say uh, you, you mentioned – that you weren't talking about them, but you mentioned, uh, you know, the brother and sister because I always go back to the XC90 kids. Uh, out of Oklahoma. That, that, that's, they, who it, that, that's who it is. Yeah. Phil and Liz, yeah. They had the, the HOA enforcement tank uh, for this yeah, last was, one. It actually shot, yeah, it shot stuff out of the cannon. Um, so again, <laughs> super normal car. Oh, that's Ryan. <laughs> they were also giving citations out to everyone for homeowners association things. Uh, another thing uh, that you should plan on is like, there's going to be like people from all walks of life. So it's just like a lemons race. It's like just good just to make friends with people uh, and not, uh, you know, base your opinion off the fact that, you know, they're dressed like the Rocky Horror Picture Show or something like that. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) A lot of times, you know, like Jim Forbes' brother, uh, David, he is the only person that can repair the radio satellite in Antarctica and was on the team that mapped the black hole. So like, yeah, he was dressed up like an undertaker for seven days, but these you know these people like have a varied background just like just like racing uh and then the uh third thing um definitely is oh make the meetups like i i think i everyone that comes to the meetups seems to enjoy the meetups but i'm still only at like a quarter to 50 percent of the people showing up uh i know that people get tired but you know 
uh, getting a burger with a bunch of people that have similar interests as you uh, is always a good thing to do. There it is. Boom. Excellent. Oh, yeah, there's candlestick bowling. <laughs> oh, I, I thought this was just a meetup because everybody, yeah, this, this, yeah, looked fantastic. Yeah, so we had our award at the, at the, the candlestick uh, bowling. It was, a, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, I had, lo- I had, so I had left some, yeah, we all, so those two got tattoos. So there's 14 and, uh, or 15 and 16. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and then that's just my old tattoo. So um, I they they did something very nice for me. I had forgotten some of my clothes at a hotel, and uh, I was like, "Crap, I don't have any shirts." So I posted, "Hey, I need Hawaiian shirts." And uh, four teams stepped up, so I just wore them during the award ceremony and continuously stripped. So I had all four <laughs> on, and then after every award, I take another shirt off. So all right, uh, it's a fun time. So you get all of that fun, all the great food, and stripping Jeff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Statuesque stripping Jeff. There you go. <laughs> so, so you mentioned people like leaning into it, right? So, theme. What themes do you want to see people take a crack at that you haven't seen yet? Uh, like Venture Brothers is one of my favorite cartoons. So, the Venture, like a Venture Brothers scene would be great. Yeah. Um, there's a. I think it's like in season two and two of the henchmen are picking one henchman's picking up another henchman and he's in his Nissan Sentra and they're both going like singing along bah, 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 and he's honking his horn to the rhythm. And I just, I just, well, one, I need on Sentra. When do you see those anymore? And, uh, you know, you're dressed up like a butterfly. That's hilarious. Yes. Uh, Chrissy, uh, Venture Brothers is a cartoon and uh, there's a villain called the Monarch and that's all of his henchmen. And they do. They dress up mm-hmm. like, yeah, you know, it's 23. And uh, I forget the other guy, the the, the, the Ray Romano yeah. character. Yeah. 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 It's a good time. You know, and then you know, number 23 gets uh, haunted by the dead guy. And it's you should watch it. It's I'll look it up. I, I'll look it's it up. Like, it's yeah. literally one of my favorite shows. Um, and much like in races, I would like to see objects. Uh, you know, Eric has been calling for stuff on your roof and just making your car into a thing, like a fist or a dresser or whatever. Uh, it would be funny if, like, you could figure out, like, something based on an item. Uh, you know, you're a loaf of bread and everybody's a piece of toast. I don't know. Uh, I just like it when, and I like it when people maintain the theme throughout the whole rally, uh, because, uh, it's, it's very uncomfortable to be honest, to wear a costume (laughs) for like 18 hours. It's awful. So it makes me laugh. (laughs) Or the same costume for four days. So there's that. Yeah. It's longer. It makes me laugh. Yeah. (laughs) So, yeah, I think that those were the themes that I, you know, just, it doesn't matter what it is really just commit just just make it as dumb as you can all right just we're good at that lean into it yeah lean. <laughs> yeah just lean as hard as you can yeah that's the thing that bugs me out races like you know if you want to win halloween meets gasoline you guys know you just keep the theme going the whole weekend the best way to win halloween meets gasoline is just keep it going the whole weekend you know you'll see a lot of great themes yeah. of judging and then they're just gone after judging so i i like it when you've you know, racing or this, when you've got teams that are, that are both, they're all going for it. And what's interesting is it's very competitive, but it's not, you know, they're not trying to beat anybody down because they recognize the same level of commitment. So you just get oddball people trying to one up their each oddballness. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, that's kind of how the tattoo thing started. You know, I had gotten a tattoo and I, you know, I never had been like, go get a tattoo, but I was like, you know what? My tattoo is worth 150 points. Every tattoo now is worth 150 points. But it has to be done on the rally. Like, you can't get it before. Like, Donnie, he got a rally tattoo before the rally. And I'm like, that doesn't count. I'll, I'll make <laughs> us an appointment, Tim, for, uh, for when we're, we're, we're doing Vegas. <laughs> Dial it in. I need a sound button that, that called for a... Um, sound button what? yeah what, which, you need which one <laughs> oh i'll just do it okay i don't need the sound button i'll just uh, yeah, cool. <laughs> guys well, that's I what i needed sorry like donnie too late they're all they're all on amazon they're like 12 bucks <laughs> there you go you can put all the sounds on it you want yep okay <laughs> <Next> <laughs> oh well that is fantastic um 
obviously we'll have the uh, hashtag um, lemons rally, which you should be following anyway, because it's just a bunch of great photos. Uh, is there other stuff, you know, uh, medias that people can find this on? We'll have the link to the schedule. Uh, we'll have a link to all that good stuff. Yeah, we're on Instagram. Uh, apparently we have a TikTok, but Dylan does that. I don't, I didn't want to download TikTok. <laughs> and uh, of course we have a Facebook page. Uh, and then on Facebook, we have Lemons Rally Discussion, uh, which is run by people who have run the rally in the past. And you can get a lot of questions answered there. Uh, mm-hmm. Did you know there's a Lemons subreddit? I bet you didn't know that. There's also a 24 Hours of Lemons Discord server that most people don't know about. Oh, check this out. Yeah. All right. We're learning stuff. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I'm that's just basic go. lemon stuff. Yeah. It's on, they're on discord. They're, uh, you know, they got a bunch of stuff. Okay. There you have it. All right. I'm looking forward to this. If you have I'm rally questions. Yeah. If you have rally questions, you can check that out. The go to the, go to the, the Facebook group is actually pretty active and they even like, there, there's some enablers on there that'll post terrible cars that you could bring on a lemons rally. So um, much. It happens all the time. Yeah. Usually. Isn't that how that Buick wedge powered thing showed up a couple of that years? Was, uh, that was, that was, no, that was Jim Forbes car. Uh, okay. So do you want the quick story behind that? Sure. He knew a hyper miler guy that was retired from GM and he was an engineer for GM and decided that GM didn't do a good enough job for aerodynamics. So that was the result of his research. Uh, so Jim knew that guy and would see him at car shows all the time. And he was like, hey, uh, I want to buy that. And the guy said, no, no, no. And finally, the guy was like 85 and sold it to him. And Jim ran it on the rally. And then um, he sold it to a hotel and they polished the crap out of it. So it's like now at this hotel in Tucson, it's literally like a mirror finish. It's very, very crazy. So yeah, you couldn't, uh, you couldn't open the, uh, the hood to fill the oil. There was like a flap that was cut into it. It's awful. <laughs> he fell off the way. Yeah. We went through Texas during an ice storm and he, we, we, so he just fell off the road all the time. It was, it was, it's not a good car. <laughs> not good. It's, yeah. it's landed where it should have been this whole time. Uh, it's art, right? It's art. Yeah. It's art. totally rolling art. All right. Uh, if anyone wants to lean into the next segment or not, I don't know. Or, or we'll put skip it there. It. You. Well, yeah, but you know, somebody has got to introduce it. Oh, you mean like, just <laughs> the <laughs> yeah. All right, folks. Good job, everyone. We've got Ryan Aaron Thank King you. over at Jalopnik. And here's the thing this happened in Oklahoma City. And you hear it all the time. Here's why. Put your friggin' phone down. It is early morning. Folks are commuting. If you're not watching this video, we'll have a, the link to it in our show notes. And people are starting to stack up in the right lane. Clearly, a guy work, uh, driving a work truck is looking down, realizes traffic has stopped, cuts over in front of a semi who then takes out his front wheel loses control of the semi and proceeds to take out nine other cars. Now, everybody was actually fine, just minor injuries, but it's kind of horrific to look at. And yeah, and what was a school bus? So there's like kids involved in this one. So just, you know, don't be Jeff uh, Wakeman. Put your phone down. You know, use talk to text. Wait till you're like, what are you line. talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're good. yeah, no, we know you're a safety guy. Yeah, you so yeah, you're you're big on this one. But um, Chris, you used to have to yell at Jeff Wakeman at least once a month because we would get a text where he was clearly on the road. So, you know, oh, stop goodness. it. Sometimes, sometimes going above the speed limit. Also, uh, this video is making me wonder what insurance man is thinking about, um, <laughs> about all of how how terrible the situation is. Yes, yes. insurance man. Well, are, you, are you going Thank to have you. nightmares of this now? Yeah. So many claims. No, no. Thank <laughs> you for keeping me employed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just okay. thinking about how many pages the accident report would be because you have to put every passenger so the whole school bus uh, is full of kids. Like, oh, oof. right. <laughs> so much paperwork. 
<laughs> yeah, awful, awful, awful. No, thank you. All well, right. thanks, All right. Jeff, for being on the show. We Seriously, appreciate it. Jeff, no, no problem. Great. It's been thanks, wonderful bud. to talk to you. <laughs> All right. Looking, hopefully, looking we'll see you soon. First rally this year for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do it. Yes. All right. Uh, next week, uh, we already talked about it, but mental. Uh, well, well, maybe we didn't talk about it on the show, but uh, mental will be at SEMA. So watch our socials. He's going to go, um, go hang out at uh, look at, at Racing Junk. Uh, he'll be at their booth and stealing pens and talking to people. And yeah, so it'll be a great time. We'll get a view for what he's uh, learning there. All right. Thanks for coming. Thanks for downloading us. We hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Everyone Racers. We also hope you will join us in the world of driving, racing, and building because everyone can be a racer, even you. If you enjoyed this podcast, subscribe. It's totally free. Then go to iTunes and give us a five-star rating. Even if you hated us, give us five stars and tell us why. If you have any questions or show ideas, drop us a comment on our Facebook page, Everyone Racers, or email of us at everyone.racers at gmail.com. You can still text us at 484-243-0455. Find us on Instagram at everyone.racers, YouTube and Facebook under Everyone Racers, or even Reddit at slash E1R. Thanks again, and until next week, keep the shiny side up, unless, like us, there is no shiny side, then just keep those wheels down.